from 10% fat and you reverse it. High diet, high fat diet increases sex hormones, estrogen, androgen, and linked to increase in both breast and prostate cancer. Farm animals will elevate hormone levels. High fiber diet helps remove excess sex hormones, right? The Japanese low is cancer in their traditional diet. Next one, please. I've gone on for too long. Sun and vitamin D. It's hormone, not a vitamin. Vitamin, this is what you've got to do. 40% of your body exposed for 20 minutes, three times a week, to just get pink. And you know that the sun is right, when if you stand in the sun like this, your shadow is shorter than your body. And if you can't get enough sun, then you can take vitamin D by mouth, 5,000 calories a day, 5,000 international units a day. Next one, please. This is a graph on the disease incidence and prevention with a thing called the serum 25-hydroxy-D. Everybody knows about having their serum cholesterols done and their lipograms and having their white blood cells and having an ECG and going to the doctor and having these things checked up. But few people know about having their serum 25-hydroxy-D levels done. And this is an absolutely critical thing to do. What is that? In your bloodstream, you've got vitamin D. And what they measure is they measure something called the 25 hydroxy D level. Vitamin D, which is a hormone, a hormone is something which is made in one area of your body and has an effect somewhere else. Vitamin D gets made in your skin. If you can't get enough sun, you can take it by mouth, right? It affects 10,000. Ten percent of your total genome, right? All your gene, your total genome is thirty thousand genes. Of that, ten percent of them are influenced by vitamin D three, right? If you haven't got enough vitamin D three in your body, for example, and you get it up to that level, this is the incidence of breast cancer dropping from thirty. That eighty-three percent incidence is reduced. If you take a reference level here, you see this is the serum vitamin D level, okay? This is just a reference level. Now, the other day I, I suggested someone they have their vitamin D done, and they were 17. And my brother had a, a heart attack, and his vitamin D was at 17 as well. Now, if you get your vitamin D3 level up to 24, you reduce your chance of having a heart attack. Where's the heart attack one? Heart attack there. There we are. If you get it up to 36, the chance of having a heart attack are reduced by 30 percent. That's just that you're on your vitamin D, right? So twice a year, everyone should have a vitamin D3 done because it will reduce that possibility. Because no one gets enough sun. They did a study, for example, of people in old age homes, and what they do is they sit down, they try to get up, they can't get up. Their vitamin D3 levels are down. They give them vitamin D. They jump out the chair. They walk around. They feel better. They've linked vitamin D3. There's a syndrome called SAD, seasonal affective disorder. Wait till you get depressed. Why? Not enough sun, not enough vitamin D3. It affects your brain and how your brain functions. It's associated with depression. Right? Give them vitamin D3, it improves. You don't want to have a cold, you don't want to get flu, you don't need a flu injection. What you do, you take vitamin D3. I was getting sick the other day, right? So what do you do? You take 2,000 units per kilogram body weight for three days running. Be completely better. It's 150,000 units, three days, 150, 150, 150, better. They did the study in Japan. They took kids and they gave them vitamin D3 and they gave this bunch flu injection. And this bunch didn't get sick and this bunch got sick. D3, critical. So is this done with a blood test? Blood test. You go to your doctor and say, I want my 25 hydroxy D level done, please. And then the doctor will say, sure, now do the test. And it'll come back from T Duke Street from Path Care, mm -hmm. and the level will be down. And they'll say, You need some D3, and I'll send you to the chemist, and they'll give you some stuff called calciferol. Right? And calciferol mm -hmm. from the chemist, the little purple pill, is D2, which is rubbish. You've got to get D3. Right? Next one, please. Ah, well, I've told you what IGF is. If you go on a vegan diet, what you need to do, you need to have a B12 supplement, and you also need to do D3. Are supplements necessary? Supplements are not necessary and shouldn't be taken otherwise. If you look at the chemistry that's happening in your body, if everyone's been, anyone's been in a tube station in London, then you'll know what those tube maps look like. Now, if you look at the chemistry that's happening in your body, 
is like about 50 of those tube maps all superimposed on each other. And when you take a supplement and you throw it in there, it's like throwing a spanner into the center of, a, of an engine that's working. You overload it in one point and you mess the mechanism up. So if you eat correctly, you don't need to do supplements. You've got to eat a varied amount of protein, right, and not eat animals. 90% of type 2 diabetics, 95% of autoimmune disease is gone. Is the diet really possible? What's IGF? I've told you about that. I'll start with this. Is the iron? There's certainly iron. How much protein? I've told you how much. Next one, please. You need dietary modification. No dairy, no oil. Why no oil? Everybody says Mediterranean diet, that's the right diet. Mediterranean diet comes from Crete in 1950. It doesn't come from France or Italy or, or Israel or Egypt. It comes from Crete in 1950. Why? Because in 1950, the Germans had just gone through there. They took all the chickens and the fish and, the, and all the animals, and the people weren't eating animal. They didn't have any dairy. So they were very healthy. They were eating salads and olive oil. So they said, olive oil is good for you. And in this magazine here, there are adverts, this Heart Foundation magazine, there are adverts for olive oil. Here's an olive oil advert, right? Good for you, good for your heart. Here's another one, good for your heart. And then in here also, it says that your cholesterol level should be five. If your cholesterol is five, you die. If your cholesterol is four, you also die. What you do have to do, you've got to have a cholesterol of 3.8 and under. And some people with genetic problems have to have cholesterol of even lower than that, like one or two, right? So this journal, this magazine, which is a handout from doctors' offices, is full of the most incredible piffle I've ever read in my life. Here's an advert for canned fish, which is insane, right? So, you've got to reduce your fructose in fish. You see this? You must reduce your fructose intake. You mustn't do fruit juice. Because you do the fruit juice, you get the uric acid, you do all those nasty things, okay? You mustn't do, you must do the D3. No animal protein, no oil. Why no oil? Because <coughs> I was told you about an ankle Vogel. No, I haven't. Vogel is a, a cardiologist in the States, and what he did, he took a whole bunch of healthy kids, and he fed them salad with olive oil. Now, when you say to an American Mediterranean diet, that means a hamburger with lots of olive oil on it, right? But it wasn't that. So he made them a salad, put some olive oil on it, gave them the olive oil, and then measured a thing called flow-mediated vasodilatation. And two hours after a salad olive oil meal, the flow in the blood vessels was reduced by 30%. And it lasted for six hours. So olive oil is not good for you. It's nine calories per gram. It has got no nutritive value at all. If you want to have olives, have the whole olive. But don't have the olive oil. Next one, please. Very simple. Whole food, plant-based nutrition, Nothing to do with calories or quantities of food. You can eat as much as you like. Next one, please. Cornerstone, strictly whole foods. Fruit, don't forget the factors. Vegetable, green, and better. No refined packed industrial foods or oil. Definitely no animal source products. Next one. First week. This is how you can do it if you think it's too difficult to do it in one go. In the first week, you stop the milk and all the dairy produce. In dairy is a thing which is very similar to morphine. That's why people are to do to cheese, right? There's a thing called casomorphine. Casomorphin gets in your brain and says, I've got to have cheese. Right? Remove the added oils. In the third week, stop the animal products. If it takes you longer than three weeks, it's also fine. I occasionally still eat a piece of fish. I like fish. I love fish. But I know it's bad for me, so I don't do too much of that. If you're going to eat something bad, eat something good after it. Next one, please. Okay. In one milligrams, your blood chemistry will normalize. Next one, please. This is a sheet that I've written out. It's a double-sided thing, it's on an A4, you fold it like this and you put some, some uh, plastic on it so it will exist after the bomb goes off. Next one, please. This is a, a level of fructose which you're allowed to have. You shouldn't have more than 15 grams of fructose a day. One apple has got 9.5 grams. So you can have an apple. You can have a whole bunch of apricots and guavas and stuff down here because it's got low fructose content. But if you have a fig, We've got 23 grams straight away in one year to dry it for Next one, please. These are the foods that, that we eat. This is the best thing you can do. I have this every single morning, and I've got it on the table over there for afterwards. I want everybody to have a little taste of it. This is what it is. It's chopped up apple. It's freshly ground flaxseed. It's gooseberries, 
strawberries, blueberries, banana, and two cups of jungle oats, raw. raw. And onto that raw, delicious, delicious, because you haven't damaged it then, right? You haven't killed some of the critical nutrients that are in there. It's delicious. You want to cook it, you can cook it, it's not a problem. Don't, don't put sugar on it. Don't you need to soak that oats? Yes, you don't need to soak it. What I then do is I take some soy milk, which I get from Willie's, which has got no apple juice in it. They've got organic soy with no sugar, no sweetener. You put it on there if you don't want the soy. You can have almond milk, you can make your own almond milk, it's very easy. You can have oat milk, you can have rice milk, but don't put cow's milk in it. Right? You get it at Woolworths. Yeah, at Woolworths, yeah. Well, you, know, you can also get to the <coughs> also got, but you have to read the ingredients because the only one that doesn't have rubbish put into it is the one from Woolies. Right? So, or you can put water in it, it doesn't matter. Wet it so you can swallow it, because it's difficult to swallow it if it isn't wet. <laughs> Next one, please. This is a meal, Moroccan carrot chip, peel and chip, chip. We've got an example of that up there. You can taste that. Next one, please. It's couscous and salad. This is another one. Mixed vegetable soup with onion, garlic, tomato, cauliflower, courgette, spinach, black porter, melina, mushrooms, accompanied by a mixed salad and brown rice. If you take a great big mushroom like this, and you put some balsamic vinegar and some garlic and some onions and you put it under the grill and you put it on a bit on a, a whole wheat roll and you put fresh tomato and lettuce and some and some mustard on it, you will not tell the difference between that and a steak. It will be the same. Because a piece of steak without the herbs and the flavouring is rubbish. And it's bad for you and that's good for you. Next one please. Here's a sweet potato butternut cauliflower curry. Serve with fresh coriander on brown basmati rice, finely chopped mixture of fresh tomatoes and onion. Yummy. Next one please. Mushroom, spinach, red pepper, small roma tomatoes, onion, garlic, herbs, lightly cooked, served with brown rice. Divine. Next one, please. Cold summer salad, mixed beans, roma tomatoes, onion, cucumber, olives. I've got that on the table. Next one, please. That's my wife, Margaret. That's what she looked like three weeks before she got the diagnosis in Phuket. Right? And she didn't look much different to that when she died. She really did. She was beautiful. And this is